In our book, there is a section that talks about resultant velocities, or simply combining velocities. And I uh, wanted to give you a couple examples, and also give you an example why this um, there's some problems with this this section as well. Um, so we'll start off with the picture in the book of a bus. This is a bus. That's why I label things because it's hard to tell what my drawings are sometimes. And we'll say that the bus is traveling at a velocity of, um, I don't know, 25 meters per second. And we'll call this the positive direction. Okay. And a person on the bus is walking to the front. And we'll say that he is walking at a, a, at a speed of 5 meters per second, um, but also in the positive direction. So it's going, um, you know, to the front, going forward as well. So the resultant velocity is going to be a little bit faster than the bus because he's traveling with the bus, but also walking toward the front of the bus. And resultant velocities merely states that you just combine the two velocities. So we get uh, positive 25 meters per second plus the 5 meters per second and we end up with a 30 meters per second traveling in the positive direction. So that is the, the resulting velocity of the person on the bus. Okay, um, let me give you another example. Let's say that uh, a boat is traveling down a stream and the boat is traveling at, say, um, a positive 20 meters per second. But the stream is traveling in the opposite direction. So because it's in the opposite direction, it's going to be um, a velocity of in, in the negative. And we'll say, to keep the math easy, we'll say that it is traveling at 10 meters per second. So the boat traveling against the current at 20, the current itself is um, 10 meters per second. So we combine those velocities of the positive 20 meters per second and the negative 10 meters per second and it results in a positive 10 meters <clears throat> per second and so the boat itself even though the engine is uh, trying to go 20 meters per second the current is um, fighting against it at 10 meters per second <clears throat> and so it results in a resulting velocity of a positive 10 meters per second. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now, pretty simple concept, really easy to understand, uh, but here's, here's the problem here. Let's say we have uh, the Starship Enterprise, and the Enterprise is traveling, we'll call it in this direction, at a rate of a positive 8.8 .8, um, times the speed of light. That's what C is, speed of light. So eight tenths of the speed of light, and so it fires, fires a missile. I don't think, I don't think they fire missiles on the Enterprise. I think they're photons or something. I forget what they call them. Um, but it's traveling, traveling this way, at uh, a rate of a positive 0.4 times the speed of light. Okay, so classical physics, what we've just learned of resultant resultant velocities, we would say that 8.8 uh, .8 times the speed of light, positive direction, plus um, 0.4 times the speed of light, positive direction, will result in a 1.2 times the speed of light. Okay, and that's all well and good, but unfortunately, we know that the speed of light is the fastest uh, speed that can be acquired in the universe, and so this is not a possibility. All right, and so you'll get to learn maybe in high school or maybe you take a college physics class um, that this classical this classical physics model that we've learned about is um, is is very very close to being accurate, but it does have some flaws. But for um, you know maybe that's uh, another explanation that I can give it in, in the next video. But um, for our purposes, you simp simply add the velocities together. You combine those velocities. Sorry. You just combine the velocities. All right. Just combine the velocities. And you end up with um, the resultant velocities. So same thing for this one. So.
um, real simple and maybe I'll make another video that will explain um, explain this part and the solution to this one. All right, thanks for watching.